and listen to Barbara talk business. He didn't want to blow his chances at long-term love and short-term sex. Barbara began to talk about monthly feedback figures and John started to zone out, imagining him and Barbara at the reunion, a power couple. She would make his classmates sick with envy, if he could get her to tone down the boring chatter. John's balls were gripped by certainty. Barbara was the perfect date for the reunion. John thought he would impress Barbara by going behind the bar and showing the bartender a thing or two. Despite Barbara's protests that it was unnecessary, John knew that a true gentleman should follow her home. He was excited. There was still three months until the reunion and he'd already landed his perfect date. All he had to do was seal the deal. Barbara thanked John for the evening and politely did not invite him inside for coffee or sex, even though John had dropped some pretty obvious hints he'd be into both, or just the sex. The door slammed on John's hopes. He didn't understand. He'd laughed at all Barbara's pie chart jokes. He'd listened to her boring stories. The blank eyes of the lawn flamingos were witnesses to John's shame. John began the lonely walk home, thoughts tumbling like shoes in a dryer. He had done everything wrong. Barbara had led him on just to humiliate him. John felt empty. How could he get love? He felt like he was missing something, some key to attracting sex. But John was shooting blanks. What did Peens want? Then it hit John out of nowhere. Stuff. He had the success. He just needed to show it off. But where was John going to get all the stuff he wanted? John needed a sign. A new day, a new John. He waited outside his local buttload store for it to open, eager to spend his promotion bonus on stuff. The best way to impress women. There's nothing like a rectum full of money to make a peen feel like a man. Suddenly it occurred to John that he was going to make a lot of choices. And every one of those choices would tell the world who he was. Delicious. Also delicious. How could John decide? Mm. Just so Moorish. John swallowed the last of the snacks and his self-respect. Maybe one more. That's enough, John thought. What would a date think when they sat in John's home? Comfort or style? John went with comfort, plus it matched the couch he already had. 
John weighed up all the differences, but this was a tough choice. Something told John this was the TV for him. John chose the extremely, obviously bad TV. John realized that it was only two months and 29 days until the reunion. Time flies. Cactus or Rose? Was John a rugged hero or a romantic poet? If John grew his own flowers, then he'd save on romantic gestures in the long run. There was nothing John could take with him to the grave. Except his coffin. Death is inevitable. Style is not. John liked to get his pizza delivered. That way he could see Delilah, the delivery peen. She always made him smile. Delilah thought pineapple on pizza was gross. This way, she would never know John's shameful tastes. What bedding would Delilah prefer? John couldn't help wondering. Pizza sheets would show her that John could also deliver in bed. Devoid of any sense of style, buying new clothes would be John's toughest challenge. John decided to go with the outfit. Music, the food of love. Should John go retro sophisticated or just retro? John's personal nostalgia was more important than sound quality. Every can was made of metal, pulled from the bones of the earth wrestled to the surface and smelted in roaring furnaces. All so John could buy peas preserved in salty water and stick them up his butt. John's new purchases were on the way to his apartment. All he had to do was invite a date over. One look at all his stuff and they'd be overwhelmed with sexual desire. John felt proud and also hungry. It gave him an idea. He should invite Delilah over for dinner. John was excited. Delilah was on her way. He just needed to set the mood to romance. Classy. John hoped she didn't have allergies. That must be Delilah at the door. The door opened and there was Delilah. John gulped down his nerves and invited her in. John could tell that Delilah was impressed by his stuff. It was time to crank up the mood to seduction. John wanted to offer Delilah wine, but he'd already popped his cork. Delilah started looking as nervous as John felt. He assumed it was because she was shy too. They really were compatible. Of course, at the reunion, he couldn't mention Delilah was a delivery peen. That would be embarrassing. Delilah suddenly headed for the door. John hadn't even paid. And just like that, John was alone again. 
Delilah hadn't even looked at his stuff. Not even the pizza bedspread. The rejection burned. John felt insignificant. He had everything he wanted. The job, the money, the stuff. So much stuff. Your dead technology tapes. Take that, TV. He wanted to destroy all of it. Shove it into the abyss. His stuff didn't matter. He was a shaft in the machine. A lonely piston pumping away like all the others in his rigid place. Fuck you, Fridge! Nothing special about him. Why should Delilah, or Barbara, or any other peen be interested in dating him? He was just like everyone else and they could tell. John wanted to be special, but he had to face the numb truth. He wasn't. Die, couch! And all the money and stuff he'd ever accumulate wouldn't change that. He thought it would make him unique, but it just made him more like everyone else. He should leave it all. Fuck off, inanimate objects. Get out of this little town and go on an adventure. Sayonara, stool. Be gone, boxes. See the world. He was a boring corporate drone, but he didn't have to be. He could be a traveler, exploring jungles and climbing mountains. He could visit the wonders of the world and get his picture taken. Like Peeny Island, the unspoiled paradise he'd seen on TV. That was it. John had to travel. Bags packed, John was ready to put 5,000 miles between him and his problems. He was leaving it all behind. John was so close, he could almost smell the freedom of the skies. Security sent John back through the detector. John had forgotten he had his nail clippers with him. He'd have to buy another pair soon, or he'd look ridiculous. When the acceleration of takeoff had slackened, John felt a sweet relief. He had left his worries on the runway. He was up in the clouds on his way to adventure. <laughs>